Taiwan has an ambitious goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Solar power is a big part of that. In recent years, repurposing traditional aquaculture farms to install solar panels has become a politically favorable project. The Council of Agriculture even has a slogan for such projects, a symbiosis of fisheries and solar power. Hundreds of fish farms have been converted to solar in just a few short years, and nowhere is the change more striking than in Tainan's Qigu district. As a bastion of traditional aquaculture, hundreds of fish farmers still make their living there using techniques adapted for Tainan's unique ecosystem. But many of the new solar farms destroy fish ponds. And with solar farms taking over more and more land, fish farmers say their way of life is being destroyed. Some even say that organized crime is linked to Tainan's solar industry. Now, locals are taking their protests to the government, demanding protection for their land and their industry. Fish ponds, salt fields and marshlands, the classic coastal vistas of Qigu's fishing villages. Seen from above, the sun is glinting off the land. But where once were shimmers on a lake surface, now many of those twinkles glance off solar panels. Solar power installations have sprung up as far as the eye can see here in Qigu. Young fish farmer and local Chou Chuanghui has brought us here on a scooter to see the aquaculture ponds. But where are they? The road is closed here, so I guess we need to take a left. We can't go this way. Roads are closed for building works all over the area. We thought our journey would take two minutes, but after being forced to take a very long cut, it was more than 20 minutes before we finally arrived at Cho's fish pond, which is surrounded on three sides by construction sites. I would never have imagined that one day I'd get up at my own home and there'd be solar panels everywhere. To be honest, if I signed a contract with solar power, I could do really well from it. That's the truth. But the thing is, I don't want this to be all there is of my home in the end. The other thing is, is solar power really useful as a power source? I have a big question mark around that. 34-year-old Cho has a master's in mechanical engineering from National Zhao Tong University. He left his career in tech six years ago to move back to his hometown and get into aquaculture. Since then, he's seen the fish ponds of Qigu start to disappear, one by one. The official land use classification has changed everywhere here. It's all changed, and it's become 100% solar power. It's already not a symbiosis of fisheries and solar. The symbiosis of fisheries and solar power is a familiar phrase. It's been government policy to promote solar panels as an additional source of income on land, primarily used for fish farms. It's supposed to be a win-win for both industries. Many areas hugging the west coast across Yunling, Jiayi, Tainan, Kaohsiung, and Pingdong were named priority regions for the policy. They want us to learn how to do it as we go along, but the government has already spent five years and more than 1,000 hectares on this, and I can't see anything that excites me or makes me want to get into it. The government has a clear goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. The Council of Agriculture wants symbiotic projects to produce 4 gigawatts of power by 2025. By June 2022, more than a quarter of Taiwan's 40,000 hectares of fish pond land had installed solar panels. Of those, 13,000 hectares of solar panels, more than 1,000 hectares were in Qigu, the most of any districts in Taiwan. Qigu has the largest area of fish ponds in the country, 48,000 hectares. It also gets many long hours of sunlight a day. That has made it a huge target for solar companies. Think about it. If you rent the land to fish farmers, you can make 30,000 NT or maybe 50,000 NT a year from a hectare. But if you rent it to a green power company, you can times that by 10. How exciting! But how can they afford such high rents? 
It's because of the financial games being played in the background. In two connected events that shocked Taiwan, 88 bullets were fired in Tainan's Xuejia district in November 2022. Later, suspected shooter Hong Xiangzhi and conspirator Hong Zhenjun were extradited from China to Taiwan. The suspected motive was gaining a monopoly over local solar power after profits failed to meet expectations. Locals were not entirely surprised. The shadow of organized crime and solar power has long been been an open secret. Their profits are too big. Otherwise, why would something like the Shui shooting happen? There must be big money in it. Somebody's making huge profits behind the scenes. Local fish farmers get up at 2 a.m. to go out and harvest clams. It's March, and a chilly early spring breeze is in the air. But the farmers are used to chigus biting sea winds. They're wrapped up tight and jump nimbly into the water. Clams are given a rise and then sorted by size and packed up. We harvested more than 12,000 caddies yesterday, big and small ones. We're not sure what it'll be today. A big clam sells for 40 NT or more. Facing the Taiwan Strait, Chiku is rich with marine life. The clams cultivated here live on pure seawater, constantly refreshed by the tides. They're top quality. About a third of all Taiwan's clams come from more than 1,000 hectares of Qigu land dedicated to the industry. And clam farmers are determined not to give up an inch of it. They sent us papers, sent people over to see us. A young lady came and asked if we want to do electricity. I said, no, we want to do aquaculture. I don't think solar power is so great. It's not development. At 8 a.m., we went to the daily gathering and morning tea before work at the Fish Farmers Networking Club. This place is the heart of fisheries, culture, and tiku. Some people here are landowners who own the fishing ponds, and some are tenants who do the work. Still, others are both. But when solar power companies started offering rents 10 times what fish farmers pay, the local industrial ecosystem was upended overnight. Some enticing rental contracts were signed for the next 20 years. Don't try to grab this little profit that's in front of you. Don't rent the solar power. How can they dig up the roads, right? It's not that we oppose the government's plan to develop solar, but there needs to be a comprehensive plan. Right now it's complete chaos, with a bit used here and a bit used there. For the landowners, they can get four to 500,000 NT per hectare with solar. Tenant fish farmers pay just 50,000 NT per hectare. Looking at it realistically, solar is more profitable, of course. Landowner Huang Qingkuo comes from one of the four great clans of Tainan. As the owner of about 200 hectares of land, he has chosen to rent it to solar companies, and it's tough to fault his logic. But decisions like his leave the fish farmers high and dry. If we don't have land, then we can't cultivate clams. Getting driven out by solar feels like such a shame. We have to eat as well. Qigu is quite an unusual place. Almost none of this land is owned by the fish farmers. 70% of fish farmers are tenants who rent their ponds. And actually, when that land is enclosed and taken away from them, they don't have any say. Zhen Shen Yu, born in 1993, is a local young farmer. He brought our camera crew down Provincial Highway number 61 to this lookout point to see how Qigu has changed. This is basically the highest ground in Qigu. From here, you get a better view of all the aquaculture lands from east to west, as well as the changes that the land is going through. In front of us, there's a village we call Hailiao. To the north of Hailiao is a symbiosis site that's 50 to 60 hectares large, and to its south there's another one of about 130 hectares. What's visible here is huge changes to the landscape. What's invisible is complex impacts on the shape of local industries, labor relations, and ecosystems. Going by ecological data, this whole area was once a hot spot for the black-faced spoonbill. If you look down from a high place, you see how fast the landscape is changing everywhere. More or less, all those changes began in the last year or two. 
Gradually, solar panels have been building up and accumulating. In the last 3 to 5 years, more and more land is being used for that. You can see the wide swathes of land used for solar farms in this drone footage. Chigu covers a total of 11,000 hectares. In April 2022, 1,100 hectares of that were used for solar, one-tenth of the entire district area. It's local people who have to live with the consequences of the symbiosis. They argue that principles are getting trashed as a proportion of land used for solar farming grows. Protests have become commonplace. Why are local people calling for controls on the amount of solar development? We don't know what impacts will result from this kind of random and aimless development. It's not really very clear how we should respond to this issue. It can't be solved with spin and strategic messaging like the symbiosis of fisheries and solar means that both will flourish. The real core of the controversy around solar in the last few years is because the main way solar is developing now is these capitalistic large-scale solar farms and because there are none of the regulations there ought to be managing and governing it. The people of Chigu took to the streets again in late 2022. They were calling, not for the first time, for controls on the scale of solar development. The economics ministry recently released a white paper on the use of land for power generation, and the fisheries agency has an industry policy. But new problems keep cropping up in Tainan, invisible to overall government strategy. Taiwan actually needs so many indoor aquaculture sites. The relevant authorities in the fisheries sector need to really think about these questions. This thick file is a list of all the approved symbiotic farms under a roof in Tainan. There are 275 such farms. Under a roof means the fish or seafood are cultivated indoors and engulfs greenhouse with walls on all four sides must be built and solar panels go on the roof. Applications for indoor farms are gradually increasing, but they're not soaring as the media reports because they used to be practically zero, and now they've gone from zero to something. That makes people think, why are there so many more all of a sudden? The first thing we're concerned about is whether a large number of indoor solar farms will push out their original tenants who are fish farmers. Of course, the National Energy Administration says that fishery tenants must come first, but with the model of solar farming that businesses want, the fish farmers won't be able to work. There are quite a lot of companies that maybe want to build a solar farm and then immediately transition it. They haven't thought about how to run it in the long term for 20 years. There are actually lots of companies and their quality is very uneven. In theory, using land for aquaculture and energy generation is a nice idea, but there's a huge gap between ideals and reality here in Chigu. As solar farms proliferate across the land and fish ponds are drained away, it's hard to see the symbiosis, and so far no one is willing to back down.